Now this year, Manchester's other football club, City, not United, celebrates its 120th anniversary. And it's believed to be the only club in the world to have been founded by a woman. Anna Connell was a vicar's daughter who wanted to give local men something to do to keep them out of trouble and, crucially, out of the pub. When she started the team in 1880, they would play on a scruffy bit of derelict land. Well, now City is one of the richest clubs in the world and desperate to unseat its illustrious red neighbour as the team in Manchester. Judy Mary went to a home game and asked some of the faithful if they knew who Anna Connell was. Anna Connell? The name doesn't ring a bell, my love. You're obviously a City fan. Have you heard of Anna Connell? Did she choose Sky Blue as our kit years ago? Is she somebody that's been to every match and that sort of thing, yeah? No, 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 no. Never heard of her, I'm sorry. And how long have you been coming and yeah. you've never heard of her? But not the lady that's always made all the scones and before the matches, no? No. The executive or something? No, not an executive. The accountant. Kit lady. Excuse me, I can see your City fans. Sorry, they are. Do you know who founded the club? Textile, mill owner, something like that? Absolutely not a clue. <laughs> I don't know. No idea. Well, this very small shopping precinct is the site of what was St Mark's Church, and it was, of course, here that Arthur Connell and his family set the ball rolling in what was to become Manchester City Football Club. For the first 18 years of his ministry in the church, Arthur was not entitled to the services of a curate. Consequently, much of the work that would have devolved upon a curate actually fell to Anna and Georgina, the sisters. One of the big problems in this locality was drink. Understandably to some extent, because the men, men lived in hovels, they lived in overcrowded, dirty houses, and to escape from this, they took refuge in the pubs. And, of course, they were using money on drink that they should have been spending on their wives and children. There was an activity called scuttling, which was basically an early form of gang warfare, which used to take place between the different districts of this part of Manchester. Quite often you'd see headlines such as Openshaw versus Gorton in, in the local papers. And those, instead of it being a football match report, it was talking about violence between two different gangs. And it would talk about lads of 15, 16, 17 or whatever, taking off the belts and whacking each other. And Anna looked at these men and it grieved her that they were wasting their lives senselessly. And she wanted to do something to get them out of the pubs and off the streets. And she set up a weekly working men's meeting. That is original. That's original. We're now walking past the terraces, which were almost certainly here at the time Anna Connell lived in West Gorton. And I find this quite moving, really, when I think that Anna knocked on every door in the parish to invite the men to come to her working men's meetings. What sort of activities would be going on in this club? It offered them a, a sort of social outlet perhaps away from the drinking and away from those sort of problems. Within the working men's group, she set up a library. Through the church, there was obviously savings clubs and so on. Where did the idea of a football team come from? William Bisto, who was the sidesman, hit on the idea of starting a cricket club, and they so enjoyed the cricket, the men decided, in order to keep fit for the following cricket season, to play football during the winter. And they called themselves St Mark's West Gorton Football Club. And this, of course, became Manchester City. The great Manchester City team, league champions last season, cup winners this season. One goal to nil, but it's the one goal that really matters. We're standing on the edge of what would have been the very first pitch. The very first game that, that took place was actually against the Baptist Church from Macclesfield. They didn't play on this pitch for very long, did they? St. Mark's had a number of venues, as, and, and each venue eventually caused a sort of name change. But the second season was played at the Kirkhamsden Cricket Club. But it was whilst we were at Kirkhamsden Cricket Club that we played against Newton Heath for the first time. Newton Heath evolved into Manchester United. So as far as we know, this was the first time that Manchester City played Man United? It's definitely the first time. Who won? City or United? City won, of course. Uh, you, you'd expect that. This is the building that was formerly the Union Iron Works, and interestingly, it's the only building still intact from Anna Connell's day. It employed many men who attended Anna's meetings, and one of the senior officials of the Union Iron Works, William Bisto, it was he, of course, that gave Anna considerable help 
in getting her working men's meetings going. And ironically, really, because he himself had done something similar, but uh, the club that he formed for them fell apart because the men didn't turn up after a while. And it's remarkable, therefore, isn't it, that Anna, when she was beset with a similar problem of poor attendance, did not give up, persisted, and as a result, Manchester City Football Club exists today. Manchester City through Jonathan Macken in added time against all the odds in the fifth round of the FA Cup. City 3-0 down at half time and down to 10 men have stunned Spurs in the most incredible fashion. Within a year, the men were so grateful to Anna for what she'd given them that they decided to give her a presentation. They had a special evening at which they presented her with a gift as a token of gratitude. And the Archdeacon of Manchester was there, and his words spoken that evening are quoted in the local press at the time. It must be a great source of encouragement to see how the movement had been taken up, and the highest credit was due to Miss Connell for the way in which it had been carried out. No man could have done it. It required a woman's tact and skill to make it so successful. In Anna's lifetime, how successful did the club become? In 1904, they finished up runners up in the Football League and they won the FA Cup, which no other Manchester side had done. So basically, within 24 years of that very first game, they'd become the most successful side in Manchester. We're now at the graveside of Anna Connell's parents. Anna, her mother, the same name, and Arthur, her father. Where is Anna herself buried? That's a mystery. We do know that she's in the Midlands. I did fear at one point that she was underneath the car park next to St. Lawrence's Church in Darleston because she actually died in Walsall, uh, having joined her sister Georgina uh, many years after her father had died. This is Manchester City's museum, and basically the museum starts with the Anna Connell story in many ways. It starts with St. Mark's Church and, and all the, the beginning of the, the club. We know there's a lot of football teams that have come from church roots, but as far as we're aware, we are the only professional football team in the world that was started by a lady. And Neil Young shoots to be fair to go to Manchester City. Oh, nice. She founded Manchester City Club. Wow. <laughs> I'm amazed. I didn't know that. No. Well, that's brilliant. I, I honestly didn't know that. I've supported City since 1966 and I didn't know that. Did she really? Well, I never knew that. Clever girl. <laughs> oh, she founded a fantastic club, didn't she? Certainly did. Absolutely fantastic. And he crosses and Bellamy makes a forward. It's a fantastic win for Manchester City and humiliation for the Premier League leaders, Chelsea. Julie Mary spoke to Peter Lupson, the author of Thank God for Football, Gary James, the Manchester City writer and historian, and of course, City.